Hey there, this is your girl Candace Self coming at you all the way live from sunny South Florida. This is the final video in the series of, you know, $120 a month budget <laughs> from Publix. And I'm so sorry that I haven't gotten you this video sooner. I haven't been well. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't gotten it done. But all is well. Here I am, fully recovered. And I'm going to give you this final video. Now, in this video, I only cook two meals. And um, so you're going to see two, two of the last dinners that I made uh, in this series or what have you. But before we get to that, let's talk about the overall series. First of all, <laughs> what did I learn? What did I not learn, right? <laughs> First of all, I learned a lot during this process. I learned that it's very hard to budget $120 for a full month, even, even as a single person, if you don't plan heavily beforehand. And I kind of won it, right? Or winged it, um, whatever the case is. <laughs> I always worry about being grammatical. And I, I think won it is not, an, it's not a word. So I kind of winged it and I didn't actually plan it out the way I should have. Um, and if I had, there are some things I could have done to make it cheaper. But I went over budget. I went way over budget. <laughs> I went like more like 160 in terms of what I used um, during this series or what have you. And I did use some of the things that I um, had in the house already. You know, I, I used the oil that I had in the house for the most part, the seasonings that I had in the house and what have you, and um, maybe one or two of the food food items. But I have things left from my shopping trip. I have one pack of the bird's eye stir fried vegetables, and I have two packs of the kielbasa sausage. So I got the Smithfield and I got the Ehrlich. So one of the biggest things that I learned is that you have to plan these things meticulously in advance and know exactly what you're doing before you do one of these challenges. I want to do this again. I want to do it right, but I want to plan it properly. And before I do that, I will let you know. And, um, and I will only let you know when I have planned it properly. <laughs> The second thing I learned is that I need to set the rules really clear before I start a challenge like this. And so I'll do that. I'll, I'll tell you up front, I'm going to use my own seasonings. I'm going to use my own oil, you know, and if you had to buy your own, then this is how much it would cost if I could do it that way. The other thing I learned is that I don't like, I mean, I like the taste of kielbasa. I love to cook with it, but it's not that, that very nutritional in terms of protein. So this here has eight grams of protein per serving. Supposedly there are seven servings in the container, which is like these two long kielbasas. And that means 56 grams of protein, but over seven servings, it's not a lot. So unless you're eating a lot of kielbasa, say I divided this even into four, I still wouldn't get even 15 grams of protein, you know, in my meal, unless I'm pairing it with another protein, like chicken, which is what I did. So I learned that there are some proteins you got to pair with other proteins. Some proteins may be like a flavor agent versus an actual protein source. So if you look at it that way, if you pair it with, for example, protein pasta, then the two combined can be enough protein in the meal. And in the meal, you want to go for you know, like 30 grams of protein, 30 or so grams of protein in a meal. That way you're not having a hard time getting up to like 100 grams by the end of the day or, or 120 or more. So I try to go for 140, 150, but you know, hey, <laughs> that's me. And I do that because I'm a postmenopausal woman who, you know, has to worry about things like bone density, building muscle uh, to strengthen my bones and create more strength that would have you um, and for my well-being. But, you know, depending upon whether you're active, whether you're not active, how much you weigh, all those things will bear into how much protein you need. And you don't need to get all this protein from me, which brings me to my next um, issue. Actually, it would have been cheaper for me, believe it or not, if I wanted to have a vegan high protein month for $120. And I think that's something that I'm thinking about doing. I know it's something I'm thinking about doing. I've been wanting to do another vegan week ever since the um, the Three Rivers Challenge that I did. So, I, and I still have quinoa, you know, left over. And I still, I mean, lots of it. I still have TBP and other, um, you know, textured vegetable protein and other things, you know, left over that I need to use up because they're from last year and I need to buy new sources. So. 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do a vegan week and, and spend 120 bucks and make it a high protein vegan month. Um, I think that's a challenge I wanna do. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that, all right? And the other thing is that uh, with the price of meat or whatever, you know, going up crazily, I need to stock up on a few things, you know, and have them in my freezer before we get into, and before it hits next January and February and I'm doing another Three Rivers Challenge. <laughs> anyway, but those are the things I learned. You know, if I want to budget, I have to plan better and I have to make sure that I'm using up everything in my arsenal without waste. And I have to make sure that there's synergy and all the, you know, um, ingredients that I buy and that the meals that I plan, you know, fit in that way. And that way I can, I can, I can definitely do this for 120, but I have to be less haphazard about it. All right, without further ado, <laughs> I'm gonna show you the meals that I made. They were delicious um, during that last week and we'll pick it up from there. All right, so we're making a dish that I've been wanting to make for a long time. All throughout that challenge, I wanted to make this um, dish, but I didn't have all of the ingredients. So here we're using 24 ounces of diced chicken breast. And I didn't dice this as much as I could have but we're going to just do what we have here. All right, and then I started cooking it in some olive oil, and now it's time to add the other ingredients. So we're going to add the equivalent of a large chopped onion. And we're going to add the equivalent of three sticks of celery. The celery was not faring so well <laughs> in my refrigerator. So we're gonna add that. I'm gonna turn this back on because I had to turn it off for a while because it was getting a little bit overcooked and I didn't want that to happen or cook too much. It's not overcooked yet. This is not, the chicken's not done yet. All right, so I just turned this back on And basically the chicken cooked in its own juices. And what I'm doing is breaking the chicken up into slightly smaller pieces, because this is a pretty large dice I have here. But I just added the onions and the celery. And it's weird because normally most recipes when you're doing a soup, and by the way, this is a Moroccan soup, most recipes have you like put the onions and the um, celery in first, but not this soup. This soup tells you to cook the chicken first and then throw in the onions and the celery. So I'm like, okay. If that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. So, All right, so we broke this up a little bit, at least. And if I need to, I'll break it up even more. But I don't wanna like damage my pots or anything. So. All right, so that's starting to cook. And then we're also supposed to add the seasonings. And the seasonings are one teaspoon of, no, a half a teaspoon of turmeric, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of chili flakes. So I'm supposed to add a small piece of ginger, which I don't have. So I just added some ground ginger. And I'm also supposed to add a cinnamon stick, which I don't have. Or actually I do have, I have no idea where it is. So what I'm gonna do is just add in the tiniest little bit of ground cinnamon. And you can definitely tell this is a Moroccan dish with the cinnamon and the ginger in here. Ooh, the smell is amazing. I'm just gonna make sure that this seasoning gets throughout the recipe. This seasoning smells amazing. 
and it looks amazing. Who the heck knew? <laughs> So it says here, fry until I smell the aroma, which I do. And then it says, add the tomato paste. So this recipe calls for three tablespoons of tomato paste. And y'all, if y'all remember from my, um, from the challenge, the Three Rivers Challenge I just finished doing, I still have some tomato paste I need to like use up. So what I'm doing here on the stove, which you can't see right now, <laughs> is squeezing in a tablespoon of tomato paste into my spoon. So that's one. I can definitely smell the aroma. Wow. Let me tell you, this is a recipe 30 um, recipe, recipe 30.com or something. And the guy's a chef. He's like amazing. And he, I mean, his videos are like, I mean, I can only aspire. <laughs> they're like choreography. I mean, they're, they're ridiculous. All right, this is three tablespoons of tomato paste. Now, this recipe also calls me to put in, which I'll be doing soon, um, a few other ingredients. see this better. The tomato paste is down in here. Turn this down a little bit. And I'm supposed to add a can of tomatoes. That's my can of tomatoes. And I'm using these Hunt's um, no salt added diced tomatoes. Hi, this is gonna be a soup for the ages. I'm still glad I'm making this dish. All right, now. I'm supposed to also add the chickpeas, the lentils, and the chicken stock. Okay, this recipe calls for a quarter cup of dried chickpeas, soaked, and a quarter cup of green lentils, green or brown lentils. I soaked on the bottom of the lentils and on top of the chickpeas. I soaked these overnight. So now I'm putting them in here. And they swell up when you soak them. Now this is a high protein soup for your, I mean, <laughs> for real, for real. Lentils, chickpeas, chicken, all right? Okay, and then I'm supposed to add chicken stock. Now this calls for two quarts of chicken stock. And I'm using one of the quarts of chicken stock that we harvested in the very first video. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in here. And it's still kind of frozen, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so hopefully it will go ahead and oh, defrost fast enough. But I had that in the freezer this entire time. So that's one of the quarts. Now 
now we'll definitely defrost as this cooks down. And then I'm also supposed to add another quart. Now this was probably like two thirds of a quart because I actually used some of those earlier in the week. This is um, organic chicken broth from Sprouts, no salt added. So I'm gonna add this like quarter of veggie broth that I have left. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of this better than bouillon. It's way in the back of the refrigerator. <laughs> a little bit of better than bouillon. All right, so it's not to boil the tears. Um, all right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this better than bouillon and then it says season with salt and pepper, bring to the boil, turn the heat down and cook it for, cover it and cook it for 60 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is add some of this Goya adobo and then we'll adjust the seasonings afterwards. And then I'm gonna cover it and simmer it for 60 minutes and bring you back then, okay? All right, so the alarm has gone off and now it's time to check out this soup. Actually. All right, so there's nothing stuck on the bottom, that's good. And what we're supposed to do now is to throw in a small amount of pasta. It's supposed to be vermicelli and it's supposed to be broken up, but I don't have any vermicelli. So I'm throwing in some pasta I do have. <laughs> and probably a little bit more than what they require. But let me check this for seasoning. That is really good. I mean, that is, and I'm gonna admit, I actually forgot when, when I put in the tomatoes, they were supposed to be pureed. And so I went back and I took the remainder of that can of crushed tomatoes that I had earlier with the basil and I went and put that in here. So this is really tasty. Um, it's really tasty, it's flavorful. And it's got that Moroccan spice in here. So I'm just checking to see how the, because these were kind of hard enough, check them out earlier, how the chickpeas are cooking. Mm -hmm. The chickpeas need about 10 more minutes. So we're gonna let that pasta cook down. And then we're gonna come back and adjust the seasonings a little bit more. As a matter of fact, while I'm here, let me adjust some of these seasonings right now. I'm gonna add a little, cause it needs a little bit more salt. A little bit more of this, the Goya adobo. And I'm not gonna add like the Kinder's wood fire garlic because there's no garlic in this whole recipe. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm not gonna like do that. Um, I'm just gonna continue with, a, put a little bit more salt in here. And then when the time comes, I'm gonna add some lemon. And I think it's all it's gonna need. It's really delicious. All right, I'll bring it back. All right, so let's check on the soup. Let's give it some lemon juice. And stir it around. A 
Let's check the seasoning in the broth. Mm. That is delicious. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna serve up some of the soup. And I'm gonna give it a full taste test. <laughs> By the way, this bowl is hot. Trying to get a little bit of everything. I gotta put this bowl down though, because this bowl is hot, y'all. No joke. <laughs> All right. Mmm. The pasta's cooked perfectly. Mmm. The flavors are popping in my mouth. The chickpeas are a little bit al dente. I made these from scratch. I think what I'll do next time is parboil these a little bit. But everything else in here is delicious. Oh my goodness. I mean, delicious. The chicken is overcooked though. <laughs> I mean, it said to cook the chicken for an hour in this, in this, you know, obviously it's been cooking for an hour, but the flavor is like out of this world. Everything in here is delicious. The only problem I have is that the chickpeas are a little bit underdone. Man, I've already thrown the pasta in here, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> but I'm just going to eat this. It's really good. And hopefully, the chickpeas will be a little bit less al dente as I warm it up. Because if I try to cook it more now, I'm just going to like seriously overcook the pasta. So, but the lentils are perfectly cooked. The chicken is it's delicious. It's, you know, been cooked for a long time. The broth is out of this world. You got to try this soup. What I suggest is that you boil the chickpeas first, get them somewhat tender, and then throw them in here. Or just use canned chickpeas. <laughs> that would solve a lot of problems too. All right. I'll see you and I'll see you soon. All right. So this recipe is an old Weight Watchers recipe that I used to make called Italian skillet chicken. And it is the opposite of the other recipe in that it has me put in all the aromatics first. So it calls for two onions, which I thought was kind of excessive. So I'm just going to put in this much onion. <laughs> it also calls for me to put in carrots. It just says like one medium carrot and like one stalk of celery. I always add extra vegetables because I like the way the vegetables taste in this dish. So I put in like three small carrots and the equivalent of like maybe two stalks of celery. So what we're gonna do here is let those aromatics cook for a bit. Um, until softened. So uh, that's about 10 minutes and so I'll bring you back then. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, <laughs> the soup is boiling away over here. I'm trying to turn it down so that it simmers instead of like boils, but you can see it's boiling like crazy. <laughs> and this had to cook for an hour, which I better set a timer. It's been about five minutes. So let me set that timer and I'm turning it down so that it simmers instead of boiling over. All right, so I'll bring you back once these aromatics have cooked down a little bit, okay? Okay, so now that this is cooked down a little bit, we're supposed to add the chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this is three quarters of a pound of chicken that I basically just kind of cut up. 
and we're supposed to cook it until it's no longer opaque. And we're also supposed to add the seasonings. So the seasonings are one teaspoon of dried basil. Now, if I had fresh basil, I would just use a tablespoon of it. And then it calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. But Goya adobo has salt and pepper in it, so I'm just gonna basically season it with the Goya adobo. And, that's what I'm gonna have to use The dishwasher, anyway. <laughs> I'm just gonna use a metal fork to avoid melting anything and stir this around. Now, I like this recipe because it's fast. It's fast, it's tasty, it always tastes really good, and it's versatile. So, I could actually eat this with pasta if I want to pair with pasta, or potatoes if I'm in the mood for that or um, rice. Because it's got that tomato sauce feeling, which you can see. I'm going to be putting in some um, crushed tomatoes. And it just tastes amazing. Even though it's very simple and made of very simple ingredients. So while that cooks, the, you can see this over here is boiling away. And I turned it down, I'm turning it down to two now. It was on four. Like, I don't know why it's, it's so high. I think this eye is pretty hot. But I'm supposed to, from time to time, stir it just to make sure nothing on the bottom is burning, which it does not appear to be. And if I could tell you how good this smells, oh my goodness. I mean, it smells amazing. And that pot is hot. I'm gonna have to start using a pot holder. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see here that the chicken is less opaque. We're getting to the part to the point where it's not gonna be opaque anymore. This smells so amazing with the basil. Oh my goodness. Very simple, very simple. I mean, Weight Watchers knows how to um, have you cook like pretty healthy food that tastes good. So I think I'm gonna start using some of those old recipes. You know, the first time I lost 50 pounds, I went to fit on Weight Watchers. Believe it or not. Okay, so now that this is less opaque, we are going to add the remainder of the ingredients. Which just includes 14 and a half ounces of crushed tomatoes. And I'm using Tudoroso crushed tomatoes. Um, and this one actually have, happens to have basil, so two. So let's just get that, you know, incorporated. And then I'm supposed to turn this down, cover it, and cook it for like 10 minutes. Like I said, really easy. Very delicious. It's a great weeknight meal.
All right, so I'm gonna bring that up to a boil and I'm gonna cook it for 10 minutes to bring you back done, okay? Okay, so 10 minutes has gone by. And why do I have the feeling that this has not been cooking the way it's supposed to? <laughs> Let's see. I turned this down at one point because it was boiling away. So let me see if the chicken is done. <clears throat> I do not want to be eating raw chicken. I don't know about you, but. So basically I'm checking. Oh yeah, this is, chicken is definitely done. <laughs> Okay. Now let's see how the carrots are. The carrots feel cooked. All right. Because this wasn't bubbling when I actually um, opened this pot, I'm going to give this a few more minutes and then I'm going to check it out. But what I could do in the meantime is do a quick taste test. To see if I need to adjust the seasonings. Mm. That tastes as good as usual. <laughs> That's really good. The carrots give it a somewhat sweet taste, but not really. I think I just need to cook it for like two or three more minutes to make it melt more. Um, but really, the seasonings are almost spot on. I think I'll just do a little bit more of the salt just to make sure. And then I think I'm gonna leave it alone. I mean, it's really good. I just wanna make sure that the flavors actually melt a little bit more. So I'm gonna let it cook down the tiniest bit more and this will be done. Let me tell you, the basil in here gives it such an aroma. The carrots are tender. Um, the flavors are pretty much melted. And it always tastes, and it tastes even better the second day. <laughs> and it's so versatile. I could just, you know, have this over some pasta and be a happy child with some vegetables on the side. And this will make me like three dinners. It's three quarters of a pound of chicken. So, to me, it's really, really good. So let that cook down for like two or three more minutes just to make sure, make sure, and we will be good to go. All right, the funny thing is <laughs> that after I ended the last segment, I realized that I shouldn't have put a cover on this. This should have been cooking with a cover off. And just says to cook until the chicken is cooked through, which the chicken is definitely cooked through. So I don't want to overcook this. So let me taste it again now that I've given it a chance to concentrate the tiniest bit more. I'm just gonna taste a piece of the chicken. Okay. Now this is hot, y'all. This is like hot uh, tomato, so. Give me a moment. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. That is delicious. The chicken is tender. The flavors are concentrated. You can taste everything from the tomato on down to the basil, on down to the other seasonings I put in here. Um, this is delicious. And this is why it's such a good Weight Watchers recipe. All right, this dish, y'all, is done. <laughs> Go ahead and make this. It is so ridiculously easy. It's not even funny. And it's amazing because it's so easy, but it tastes so good. Italian skillet chicken. You know, I, I'm tempted to make myself some pasta <laughs> and have this for dinner tonight. But I think I'm gonna hold on to this and have it for dinner tomorrow, lunch tomorrow. And I think I'm gonna have the soup tonight because I'm really curious to see how the soup comes out. All right, I'll bring it back. And there you have it. <laughs> now that we've come to the end of the video, I've actually learned quite a few other lessons. Um, 
Number one lesson is when you cook chickpeas from scratch, make sure you cook them for a full hour before you put them into any recipe. <laughs> You'll be happy to know that I ended up maybe taking another 10 minutes of cooking that soup because I had to weigh really overcooking the chicken versus cooking the chickpeas. But that was worth it because it was so delicious and I ate it over and over again in the days after, like, you know, the second day, the third day, and the fourth day. And it was really delicious. And the chickpeas were a little bit less al dente, which thank goodness. The other thing I learned is that those old Weight Watchers recipes are really good. And a lot of them are high protein. So I'm gonna be whipping out those old Weight Watchers recipes. And if you wanna see that sort of thing, let me know. And that brings me to my next question, which is what would you like to see next in the series? Would you like to see me do the vegan series for a month? Would you like to see me do different diets like keto or what have you for a month? Would you like to see how I managed to get 150 grams of protein in a day and do some meal preps that way? Would you like to see me cook, um, meeting different, uh, like the, the the Big 12 or what have you, or the Blue Sky Diet where you, you know, where I'm meeting like certain criteria, um, the Mediterranean Diet, would you like to see me do that? Or would you like to see me just dive into a whole series of meal related topics, right? Or um, just do budget, uh, do grocery hauls? Would you like to see me do a series involving a different store? I realize that Publix is not in everybody's jurisdiction, but maybe Walmart is, maybe Aldi's is, maybe Whole Foods is. You wouldn't see me do like a budget getting all foods from Whole Foods. Let me know, or Sprouts, right? Let me know in the comments below. And um, I'll definitely take all that into consideration. And if you have any other video ideas that you'd like to see me tackle, let me know. All right. With all that, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, it helps the algorithm and it helps my channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, what are you doing? Go ahead and subscribe <laughs> so you can see more videos like this. And, um, you know, please leave me a comment below. They really help me in terms of knowing, you know, what you like and what you expect. All right, take care. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>